Okay, I'm a physician uh, to start with. I went to medical school, and then after medical school, I, I got interested in public health. And epidemiologists are the, uh, it comes from the Greek word epidemic or Latin word. And initially, they studied communicable diseases. They figured out the contagion and how diseases spread in populations. And I do chronic disease epidemiology. I'm not interested in the communicable diseases, except in passing. I'm interested in what's responsible for our modern plagues. And I'm convinced that the same techniques that we used to solve the communicable diseases could be used to, to study uh, what's killing us now. My little book, it's called Dirty Electricity. If anybody told me then I'd, I'd written a book about it, I'd, I would say you're out of your mind. But over the last 10 or 15 years, I've been so frustrated with my Ill Ill inability to get the word out about how dangerous uh, this dirty electricity is. Uh, we get into what it is later. That I wrote a book about it. I've also got a website. And, uh, What's important about the website, it, it's got links to the papers that the book is based on. You've got PDF files, so you don't have to go to the library. They're right there. You can push a button. You can read about Lou Gehrig's disease, which I think I understand now. And, and you can read the historical paper, which is basically the guts of the book. So it's all there for, for, for your, your use. And basically, what, what, the, what the book is about is I came to the startling conclusion, I mean, this is just mind-boggling when you think about it, that almost all the diseases of the 20th century that we consider the so-called diseases of civilization, all the cancers, cardiovascular disease, diabetes, suicide, they're all called by, by electromagnetic field exposure. Suicide? All, suicide, too. You know, suicide's got a long connection with EMF. Their study's 25 years old, showing people live near power lines or people live in residences that have high magnetic fields have higher suicide rates. And uh, I think I can explain suicide in Gulf War veterans too. I think it's another EMF disease. <clears throat> but the other reason for writing a book is uh, I think the, the cancer causing qualities and, and the other th stuff I, I stumbled on were we'll go back to Edison, but in the last 30 years we've had this explosion of new technologies for communication and you know, radio frequency radiation from cell phones and cell towers, terrestrial antennas, Wi-Fi in schools, and on, on airplanes, can you, of all places to have Wi-Fi. They beam it up from the ground, they pick it up, amplify it, send it through the, the plane, this metal cylinder where you're going to get reflections and hot spots. I mean, uh, I won't fly one of those anymore. I may never fly. And uh, there's some other cockamamie schemes, internet over power lines, broadband internet, so you can plug your computer into any outlet. That would guarantee your house is hot as a pistol all the time. And then the personal electronic equipment like my hot little computer here. Okay, now I guess let's measure, talk about what dirty electricity is. On, on this graph here, uh, the, the wavy red line is a 60 cycle uh, oscilloscope tracing on a fluke, fluke 199B. And you can't see it with this magnification, but if you look carefully at it, you get these little tiny bumps in it. That should be perfectly smooth. And if you if you put put that, that current through a, a high-pass filter and just and eliminate the 60-cycle stuff and magnify it, you get this, the blue jiggly, bumpy stuff is high-frequency transients. And, uh, called dirty electricity and, and, and harmonics. And what's causing it in this situation, this bike shop was over 20,000 units on the modified meter. It was about 20 feet from the base of a, another cell tower in a strip mall over here in, in, uh, in Indio. I shop at a Mexican bakery there and the bike shop has moved, thank God. Uh, and so I went in and asked the guy if I could measure what was in his, his shop, and he let me do it. And I got over 20,000 units, and I measured four or five other uh, shops in the mall, and they're all high. Oh, you see, cell, cell towers, 
they put out the, they, they, they're plugged into the, the, uh, the grid, so they're operated on direct current. They operate on alternating current, but their guts run on ele the electronics of all transmitters, cell towers, FM, AM, your computer, you know, everything runs on direct current. So they, the devices that change the alternating to direct are called switching power supplies or switch more power supplies or, or inverters. Same problem with solar and with wind. They don't generate at grid frequencies, so they have to change it to match. But this, these cell towers, they interrupt the current flow and inject this dirty electricity back into the grid. So, so the, the, this strip mall was right near the cell tower, and you were suffering. Just not only the radio frequency coming off the top that makes your cell phone work, but this dirty electricity that's, uh, that was pumped back into the grid that was contaminating the whole area. And the ground, too, because I'm sure these things are grounded. So, so the ways you make dirty electricity are arcing, like Edison's original generators, arcing and sparking. Uh, anytime you see par power line, you know, like a electric arcing, they're making dirty electricity. And, and these switching power supplies, anything that interrupts current flow. And every modern, all these little wall warts that use the, your cell phone charger does that. Uh, every computer in the world's got, got uh, switching power supply in it because that stuff runs on direct current. So my hypothesis is that the epidemic of the so-called diseases of civilization aren't caused by lifestyle but by, by electricity and I think the active agent is dirty electricity. Basically half the deaths from all causes in this country are probably due to electricity. Not probably, are due to it. I, mean, I don't want to mince words. The statistics are clean. So the good news is a large, large proportion of what we call diseases of civilization are preventable. And, and I'm really worried that another epidemic of, of diseases is underway caused by modern radio frequency. Well, you know, until, uh, until we got into the computer era, basically most of, oh, well, since the beginning, most electricity generated is used to turn motors, the wheels of progress. Uh, and, and industry, but now that, and most of the loads were linear, in other words, they, they didn't spit anything back into the grid. But now, with the computers and Wi-Fi and, and cell towers uh, and smart meters, and it's, it's, it's a new ballgame. If you look at urban RF levels, they've gone up exponentially. You know, I mean, we're not talking doubling, we're talking going up by a power factor, that's radio frequency levels. I mean, that, that's, urban RF is, uh, is an anathema now, I mean, because it, it had started back with the television transmitters and uh, air, air, transmitters in air, but, but the, the thing about this dirty electricity that's so sinister, it, it's in every wire in every, every house, in every office. 25 years ago, with the when people started plugging in all these uh, these these electronic devices, before that, like an incandescent bulb uses, it's a linear load. The current comes in, it does what it's supposed to do, it goes back to the substation on a neutral wire on the poles. But with this new, new stuff, it's injecting all this dirt into the grid and into the ground. And, and the reason it's going into the ground is, uh, what happened is they started getting fires in the the, and the, the neutrals in, in houses and buildings. So code change to make them beef up the, the in-building in wires. But they didn't, didn't force the utilities to beef up their return system. So what they allowed them to do is every other telephone pole, they have a, a, down, a down wire from the neutral to the ground so they're letting the earth return the current. And it will go back to the substation. Every electron that comes out has to go back. That's what makes an electric circuit. But they, uh, the, the last I heard is the 70% of the electricity that's delivered by the utility from the substation returns to the substation via the earth. The evil of that is it makes cows sick, animals that are on the ground. And, and that's actually how 
how this whole field got got started. Uh, Marty Graham, uh, you know, testified for for dairy farmers because the cows stopped giving milk and they tracked it to the this stuff coming in, going up the hooves and generating currents in, in the cows and, uh, and but it gets in your house through the water pipes, through the sewer pipes, through ground rods, and there's well, there's a book out fairly recently uh, called Earthing, and they, they pedal devices which you're supposed to lay on a bed and discharges your body currents to the earth. Unfortunately, that's great if you live in a place where those, the ground currents are okay, but you ought to see the stuff that's in the ground around here. I wouldn't want that coming back into my body through a ground wire because current runs both ways on a wire. Okay, so the, prob the problem with these uh, so-called green energies is they're not green. They make dirty electricity. I mean, like. I went to buy a bulb this morning because we were out of incandescent bulbs. I, I had to struggle to find a non-compact fluorescent bulb. Those things interrupt the current flow 30 times a second and they put tons of dirty electricity into into the grid. Okay, now we talk about green energy. There's a, and I, I'm all for uh, alternate, you know, non-polluting forms, but unfortunately solar and wind both generate DC or AC at the wrong frequencies. They uh, they use inverters to convert from one to the other. But the, uh, the equipment that makes the conversion in injects high frequency transients into the grid. If you had time, I could show you a, a couple waveforms of, from the, the wind farm down here at I 10. There's about a thousand windmills there. You can't believe the garbage in the air and in the ground. and and a lot of the new junk that's being manufactured, like like motors, the old motors had switches uh, to control how how they their speeds. Now they got these variable speed motors that have switching power supplies. They got them on furnace fans and on other appliances. Those things generate massive amounts of dirty electricity. So do uh, dimmer switches. That's one of the first devices that that, that do this. Compact fluorescent bulbs, halogen light bulbs, and the, some of the smart meters are really nasty in that they they're broadcasting 24/7. Not only are they putting RF into the air, but I'm sure that that uh, since their guts are operate on direct current, they must have switching power supplies in them too. I'd love to get one. I guess you can't buy them. You can't go get them. If somebody's got one, I got come and measure this silly thing, and I've got all the tools to do it. I know about the RF. I, I know there's different types. Some talk to each other going down the block, and other, others, uh, you know, broadcast. But uh, the other thing about them that's nasty is it gives the utilities a way to basically spy on you, and to control what's happening at your house. I don't want anybody being able to shut off my electricity without me shutting it off. I think that sucks. And, and what the big brothers getting us? And the the whole thing was supposed to tie to to talk to appliances in your house. More RF, who needs more RF? It, it's everywhere, it's killing us, it's making people sick. Well, you know, I'm, I'm really offended by some of the new homes are being built now without telephone wiring. They're f almost forcing you to use wireless uh, in your homes. And, and, and schools are just filthy with, with Wi-Fi's and, and kids using laptops. And it's just, a f I mean, that's why kids are taking Ritalin. Stetzer fixed the school up in the, up up in Wisconsin, and the kids threw their pills away. Another disease that's almost certainly related to this is childhood asthma. They, they had 37 kids in that school took inhalers, used inhalers for their asthma, and once it was cleaned up, only three of them still needed it. So, and it's just we could have a healthier, happier, longer-lived world, and we'd have to take as many pills. <laughs> And see the shrink, uh, and I really feel bad for the electrosensitive people because, you know, it's it's a real thing. I mean, I I get calls every day from them, and 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 their doctors and the medical profession think they're wacko, and they're not. It's real. Stetch is electrosensitive. We we when we visited a hospital, it was we measured it for about a half hour, and it was over twenty thousand dirty electricity units, and got out to the car, and he opened his shirt and. His chest looked like, like a meat pie. It was oozy, inflamed. I said, 
I'm like, God, how long have you had that? He said, oh, about five minutes. <laughs> no way. We, by the time we got home, you know, drove out here, it was gone. So he, he just breaks out like mad when he gets in strong fields. And he gets smartly yell too, uh, if, if he stays there. And I said, it's real. And I'm like, I bought a tel that telephone for an uh, interview the other night because the other one didn't have good fatality. I went to, uh, uh, I went to Home Depot. Went to another big box store. There wasn't a single landline phone available for sale. There was all these decked phones and digital enhanced communication technology. Those things are horrible. 24 seven they're putting bad stuff into your house. Now, now Siemens is making a good one called EcoDeck. So if you're gonna have to have a portable phone, buy one of those. It's only, only radiates you when the phone's on. The other ones are on 24 seven. And Mark DeHavis has recently showed that in a subsample of people I looked at, about 10 to 15 percent of them have uh, cardiac irregularities when the phone's on, rate and rhythm changes, which is bad news. So uh, that's what's getting us. And, uh, the, the cure is to get back to linear loads, get rid of compact fluorescent bulbs, make sure that every device that's marketed is, is filtered properly, and, and and the utilities and uh, the people who make the stuff are going to kick and scream and they've got lots of money and power and, uh, and they've, they've been able to, to keep this message quiet but let's get it out there and get people aroused and to try to do something about it. So, thanks a lot for your... <laughs> hey, but they have, hey, buy the book. <laughs> I'm going to wave it one more time. Oh, sure. It's one of the few books, it's easy to read, it's only 120 pages. It costs $10.36 at Amazon, and it's one of the few books you can read that could change your life for the better.